Hello, my name is Naval Davar. I am a leukemia faculty in the Department of Leukemia at the MD Anderson Cancer Center in Houston, Texas. Uh, it is my privilege uh, today to give an overview of uh, what I think are the new breakthroughs and progress in targeted therapies in acute myeloid leukemia. So as is well known, a number of targeted therapies have now been approved for the treatment of AML. This includes FLT3 inhibitors such as giratritinib, that is a potent FLT3 inhibitor approved in the relapsed refractory FLT3 mutated AML patients, as well as mitostorin, which is approved in the frontline setting in combination with induction chemotherapy for newly diagnosed patients with a FLT3 ITD and or TKD mutation. Similarly, IDH1 and 2 inhibitors have been approved as single agents in the relapsed refractory IDH mutated AML. And recently in the US, there has been a label expansion for the IDH1 inhibitor ivocytinib in newly diagnosed patients with AML who are considered not fit for intensive chemo. So uh, all of these targeted therapies have uh, made shown progress in treatment of AML, but when you look at the single agent response rates, let's say for FLT3 inhibitors, the potent second generation, more specific FLT3 inhibitors still give us CRC rates of about 45 to 50%, which can be improved on. Even more importantly, when you look at the duration of response, with these potent second-generation FLT3 inhibitors such as giratritinib or quizartinib, this is usually somewhere between four to 10 months. And the median overall survival is between six to 10 months. So single agents, I think these drugs uh, are the first stepping stones to get them through the regulatory hurdle and get them approved. However, in practice, I think to really use these drugs to achieve curative outcomes or to dramatically improve response durations and survivals, we need to move forward with combinations. And that has been our main focus and interest at the MD Anderson Cancer Center, especially for FLT3 and IDH inhibitors. So for example, with FLT3 inhibitors, we have done studies combining quizartinib with azacitidine in newly diagnosed AML, as well as first relapsed AML with FLT3 ITD mutations. This data was presented by our fellow Dr. Swami Nathan at ASH two years ago and should be out in print soon. And what we see is that in the frontline setting, the CRC rates are 90% in FLT3 mutated patients treated with azacitine quizartinib with a median survival of more than 20 months. Now, this is a small group of patients, about 14 such frontline patients, but still very, very encouraging and hopefully something we can build on. And even in salvage one patients combining azacitine with quizartinib gave us CRC rate of 60%, which is higher than the 40 to 45% we get with single agent quizartinib in similar relapsed FLT3 ITD patients. And more importantly, the median overall survival with azacitine quizartinib was 12 to 13 months, pretty much double of the six to seven months seen with single agent quizartinib. So at MD Anderson in our practice, we have been using all the FLT3 inhibitors as well as IDH inhibitors in combination setting. Now, azacitine was the first step, but we now have a very effective, very potent drug that synergizes well with many other treatments, venetoclax. And preclinical data does show that venetoclax has very high synergy and synthetic lethality with FLT3 inhibitors, specifically quizartinib and giltritinib, which Dr. Konoplewa and our group and others have tested and published on. So this has now led to combinations of venetoclax with giltritinib, venetoclax with quizartinib as doublets, and even triplets in the frontline setting. And at this year's ASH 2020, we will be presenting update data combining venetoclax with giltritinib, where we're seeing very, very high marrow remission rates, almost double of what you see with single agent giltritinib. And hopefully we will have the updated survival and molecular data because in our impression and experience with these patients, the depth of response, the duration of response, the ability to get them to transplant has been superior to single agent giltritinib. And now there are even frontline triplets, and some of this data has been presented from our group. Dr. Maithi, our fellow, has shown triplet data of decidabine, venetoclax with the FLT3 inhibitor, where in the frontline cohort, we had 15 patients with 100% CRC rate, zero 60-day early mortality, and at two years, the median survival was at 80%. So we really think addition of FLT3 inhibitor, and even moving forward, addition of a FLT3 inhibitor plus venetoclax to HMA, can be very, very impressive and give us durable responses. But we do have to remember that with these combinations, we get cumulative myelosuppression. So this is not one plus one plus one. In our design, we would do an early marrow around day 14. And if the marrow showed ablation hypocellularity, we stop the venetoclax. 
we would reduce the FLT3 inhibitor or even stop that at day 28 if we still didn't see count recovery and we use growth factors liberally. So there is a learning curve to using these doublets and triplets, but at the end of the day, I think these will give us very high responses and potentially very much improved survival and is probably the future of these targeted therapies. Similar approaches are also being done with IDH inhibitors. Dr. Donardo from our group has shown combination of venetoclax with IDH inhibitor or azavenetoclax IDH inhibitor appears to give much higher MRD clearance rates for the IDH than we were achieving with single agent IDH1 inhibitor. So hopefully in the next two, three years, these data sets will mature. We will have more PCR and follow-up duration of response survival. But based on our experience using a number of these doublets and triplets, we do think that this will be the way these targeted therapies are used in the near future. Thank you very much.